Your mind feels full, but unfocused. You spend the past hour scrolling, drifting from one window to another. Half a message written, a dozen thoughts half formed. Then you pick up a notebook, not because you know what to say, but because you need a place for your thoughts to land. You write one line, then another. The words come out uneven, uncertain. And something inside you shifts. In brain scans, something remarkable happens when people write about their feelings. The regions for emotion and the regions for reasoning begin to synchronize, as if the brain is learning to talk to itself. That is the hidden power of journaling. It's not just reflection, it's neurological repair. When you write, the prefrontal cortex, the part that helps you plan, analyze, and think, begins to communicate with the amygdala, the region that reacts to emotions. That dialogue gives shape to chaos. A 2021 study from Stanford found that expressive writing helps the brain recover from stress. The mid-cingulate cortex, which usually fires under emotional pressure, becomes calmer and more coordinated. And when you put emotions into words, the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex turns on, helping to quieten the amygdala. This process is called effect labeling. It allows you to feel without drowning in the feeling. Even the way you write matters. A 2023 study in Frontiers in Psychology showed that handwriting activates more areas of the brain than typing. I'm sure you would have experienced this. I used to memorize better and understand better when I wrote notes and read from my written notes. When your hand moves with your thoughts, that is, the mind slows down just enough to make sense of itself. Technique number one, expressive writing. Think about something you still carry, a disappointment, a loss, a moment that lingers longer than it should. 15 to 20 minutes, just write about it. Don't worry about grammar, don't edit, don't write for anyone else. Write until you run out of words. This is called expressive writing, developed by psychologist James Pennebacher. It works because the brain treats emotional suppression as unfinished work. Writing completes that loop. Studies show that after expressive writing, the brain's emotional centers quiet down. While cognitive control increases, your body feels lighter because your mind has stopped trying to contain what it has finally released. You might cry. You might feel tired. You might want to stop halfway. That's okay. Healing requires a small amount of discomfort before calm returns. Technique two, gratitude journaling. Now imagine a different kind of page. Instead of pain, fill it with presence. Write down two or three things you're grateful for. The smell of rain, a message that arrived when you needed it, a meal that made you feel safe. Gratitude journaling doesn't force positivity. It retrains your attention. Neuroscientists have found that practicing gratitude activates the ventral striatum and the medial prefrontal cortex, regions that regulate mood and motivation. When you do this daily, you teach your brain to look for what is stable instead of what is threatening. Be specific. I'm grateful for my friend becomes I'm grateful for the way my friend listened when I was quiet. That detail anchors the memory and your brain begins to build new emotional association. Over time, this practice tunes your nervous system towards balance. It doesn't erase struggle. It helps you see beyond it. Technique three, Reflective reframing. Start with a challenge. Write what happened plainly without judgment. Then write what it meant, what it revealed, what it taught you. And finally, write one small action you can take next time. This pattern strengthens the prefrontal regions that regulate emotional reactivity. It builds the ability to pause and reinterpret before reacting. You learn to step back, not to detach, but to understand. Over time, this practice reshapes resilience itself. You begin to see difficulties, not as failures, but as data points for growth. That subtle shift changes how your brain responds to future stress. You don't need to use all three every day. Think of journaling as mental cross-training. Use expressive writing when emotions feel heavy. Use gratitude journaling when you feel numb or distant. Use reflective reframing when life feels confusing. Each practice strengthens a different circuit of awareness. Over weeks or months, you'll notice subtle changes. You pause longer before reacting. You remember more clearly. You recover 
more quickly. Your handwriting becomes the trace of a mind learning to heal itself. We think of journaling as self-expression, but it's also self-construction. Each word you write is a small act of neuroplasticity, a quiet experiment in honesty and adaptation. So when you sit with a blank page, don't ask, what should I write? Ask instead, what is my brain trying to tell me? And then listen.